Welcome to Media Minute. For this edition, we're going to be talking about Killer Sofa, Willie's Wonderland, Chaos Walking, and we're going to dip into some of our favorite movie soundtracks. We'll be back right after this. Welcome to Media Minute. I'm Michael Forward. I'm Chris Raskowski. And I'm Rachel Edge. And for today's episode, we've uh, recently watched a couple of uh, kind of, I don't know if they're horror movies, but <laughs> yeah. they intend to be maybe horror movies. Uh, <laughs> first off, uh, we recently checked out a film from uh, 2019 called Killer Sofa. <laughs> yep. You know what you're getting with a title like that. <laughs> Except it's a lazy boy. Yeah, it's yeah. not really a sofa. It's like a recliner. <laughs> yeah, maybe they yeah. Can, like they thought it was going to be a killer sofa at first, and they realized we can't afford to do a sofa. <laughs> yeah, we need to reduce the seating. It, it's a fun little film. Uh, it's done. Yeah. Uh, what's it, New, is it New Zealand or Australia? Uh, yeah, it's a New Zealand production. Yeah, yeah, kind of low budget, but yeah. uh, like the uh, box, uh, the tin says it's about like a, a killer sofa. Um, it's I, I love the uh, the design that they have for this uh, this lazy boy or this thing because they give it expressions of uh, you know disappointment and stuff like that. It's really weird. They put like two eyes <laughs> on a piece of furniture, like two buttons, and then kind of the folds in the chair. That's kind of the the chair's like mouth. So if it's angry or something, like the chair reflects that. It's uh, pretty cre- <laughs> creative. Yeah, it's kind of awkward when a chair can still, like, out-act Christian Stewart. Yeah. Damn. Just saying. <laughs> Where'd that well, come no. from? Well, I was just saying. But, uh, yeah, no, I thought it was a really fun film. Like, yeah, it's obviously low budget, but at the same time, like, a lot of the stuff they did when it came to, like, the gore and, like, the kills and stuff, I was really impressed. Yeah. I thought it was, like, really well done for, like, low budget. I thought it was fun. It was a fun watch for sure. Yeah, yeah, because we, we watched it just thinking it would be just some lazy, like, you don't really got to pay attention to it kind of background yeah. B-movie, but... She turned out to be really good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some interesting, like, side stories about, uh, you know, there's some kind of supernatural elements and stuff like that on the go. Like, it's the film itself, like, they take the storyline seriously, even if the concept is, like, completely insane. Absolutely. Yeah, and, it, and it works. It does. It works. Yeah. Like, they, you could see the work they put into it, too. And I'm also, like, a sucker for practical effects. So seeing that in there, I was, like, yeah. so excited. If you want to see a movie about a killer sofa, <laughs> this is the movie. I remember one shot where, like, this guy breaks into, like, the, the main girl's apartment. And the chair is just kind of turned and kind of giving the, the, the guy who broke in, yeah. like, the stink eye. <laughs> it's fantastic. And then she moves across the room and they look back and then the chairs face the other direction. So... I mean, what you can do with a little bit of practical effects, I guess. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah. I, I want to see the killer sofa face off against the car seat guy from Raid 2. <laughs> oh, my you, God. You might have to go back to previous episodes to yeah. figure out what I'm talking about. But uh, Who would win? Pro- ooh, probably killer sofa. Yeah. yeah, I think he's got he's got a little bit more. He's got that supernatural. Th- that's right? going to yeah. be the, the new film, Killer Car Seat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Killer car seats from outer space or something. Yeah. I'd, I'd back that. I'd back yeah. that. Yeah, let's do it. I'd, I'd watch it, at least. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, but basically if, like, any movie from New Zealand makes it, to, like, a, has a release in North America, yeah, it's almost a sure thing. It, it's a fun flick. Oh, for sure. Yeah. If you guys are looking to watch it, Amazon Prime. That's where you yeah. can get it. Yep. And, of course, a more recent kind of horror comedy release, uh, Willie's Wonderland, <laughs> yeah. with our, our very favorite Nicolas Cage. Yes. Uh, hunting down this movie was, like, such a oh, bad time. It was but a it was a nightmare. Well worth it. Yeah. Well, well worth it. For sure. For sure. Um, yeah, if you've seen the trailer, if you, it, yeah. it prov- like the movie gives you what the trailer pr- it, promises. It's Nicolas Cage locked in the, like, abandoned amusement place. With like, like, like Chuck E. Cheese kind of. Yeah, with like killer animatronics. Yeah. And he beats the crap out of the animatronics. That's that's the story. Yeah. There's some... The, s- the end. <laughs> yeah, there's some stuff in the background with like a teenager and they're trying to bur- burn down the building because it's evil. Kind of classic kind of horror tropes. But yeah. the main focus of it is Nick Cage just like <laughs> staying in this place overnight, cleaning the place up, playing pinball. Yeah, like he was really into pinball. Yeah. Like a little, a little really too. Yeah, he's, he's really in the pinball, and uh, like, like not. I'm, never mind. Yeah, <laughs> completely silent right. protagonist. He doesn't say a word. Yeah, in the well, entire thing. Well, uh, oh, well, were you gonna say what it was? Yeah. Oh, okay. Never mind. Unless you want to do it. No, no, go ahead. 
Yeah, but I guess the reason he did it because he uh, just always loved silent horror films. Yeah. And he's like, I want to do something like that. So he did. Yeah. That's, now, that's, just, that's just the why he has no lines. If, if you're looking for like a high concept horror film or whatever, this is not for no. you. But if you're, like I said, if you're just looking for Nick Cage to beat the <laughs> crap out of a, a bunch of people in suits. And constantly switching yeah. t-shirts. Yes. Yeah. yeah because there was a lot of they t-shirts get so me. messy. Well, yeah. I mean, if you're killing a bunch of animatronics, you kind of got to make sure that you're cleaned afterwards. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you like yourself a well-oiled Nicolas Cage. <laughs> After he just curb stomped an animatronic gorilla into a urinal. Yeah. I, I kind of wish they had like a, you know, it seems like a lo- like low mid-budget film. Yeah. I kind of wish they had like a bit more mud- budget to make like the animatronics a little bit more roboticy. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you can definitely tell they're puppets. Yeah, at the same time though, well, like I thought it was really well done. At the, like for a low low mid budget, oh, yeah, like yeah. they still did a really good job. But one of the animatronics was just like a lady with a head on it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, she was she was really creepy. Though. Yeah, it, it, like it's a fantastic, uh, you know, thing. But I would like to see like a if they had like the higher budget to kind of do more oh, yeah. ro- roboticy type things. I think it might might have been a little bit better. But oh yeah, at I least agree. it wasn't CG. Yeah. Yeah. Again, that practical effects destroyed. coming in for the win. I will always yeah. be a fan of that. If you put the work in, like, you do it. Yeah. Uh, moving on to a uh, recently released, or will be recently, or will release soon, uh, Chaos Walking, Tom Holland. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, apparently it's based on a YA novel. Yes. And uh, mm-hmm. concept is there's this uh, planet, and uh, everybody on this planet, you can hear all their thoughts. And uh, this is Daisy Ridley, I think. Yep. Is the uh, female lead in that. And yes, she, she crashes is. on the planet and finds out she's the only woman there because all the men are dead. And yeah, it looks, looks pretty interesting. Yeah, I'm actually kind of excited for this. But like on a side note, could you imagine if everybody could hear your thoughts all the time? Yeah. And you couldn't control it? That, yeah. would, be, <laughs> that would suck. Life would be really hard. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, on the positive, though, if like you're walking by like somebody who was trying to do like mass harm and stuff, like you would know. Yeah. It's like, oh, this guy's literally beacon off about it right now. I'm I gonna avoid that area. <laughs> well, mine would just be like a continuous like process of puns. <laughs> I don't. That would be pretty incredible, I think. <laughs> but yeah, like the film itself, it looks really good. They got a really good cast. Um, Tom Holland is like coming up. Who's in everything right now? Yeah, yeah. and uh, I think Mads Mikkelsen yep, is, is. Uh, the super. main antagonist. He's he's like super antagonist man right now. Yeah, yeah. he is. He's the antagonist in everything. Oh, yeah, he's he, he's an incredible actor though. Can't I think. really see him playing a romantic lead. No, unless he has, and I just put my foot in my mouth. I don't know. I know he played Hannibal though. Yeah, that, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, he's he's got that uh, villainous look. Yeah, yeah. he played to your strengths, right? He was yeah. probably, I think he was born with just like a scar. Yeah, because that villainous scar going down his eye. Yeah, like he was born, and they were just like, yeah, this guy was born, literally born to play bad guys. Yeah, yeah. for sure. All right, well, let's uh, move along and start uh, talking about some of our favorite movie soundtracks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this was hard. Yeah, especially it, like growing up in the '90s, where like soundtracks were such a big thing. Yeah, but I narrowed it down. Yeah, like I thought it was easy because I was like, I had my three right away. And then this morning I was like thinking about it. I'm like, oh my God, I forgot so many good ones. I mean, has anything come out recently with like a really memorable soundtrack? Um, Damn, I don't know. Not that I can think of. I, I mean, if you're going to go musical wise, probably La La Land. Yeah. That's the yeah. only one that I can really think of. Like, obviously yeah. there's more, but. It's kind of a gimme to musicals because yeah. that's, their, that's their strength. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, if you if it's a musical and it's a bad soundtrack, like, oh, well, that's not good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I, guess the, I guess the biopics, too, that have been coming out, like Elton John's biopic, Rock and yeah. Man, like the Queen one. The, uh, the Elton John one, I wasn't a huge fan of because, oh, like. Fair. They where they stuck in like the the songs it didn't re- like make sense chronologically like yeah, he was fair. a kid and he was singing like songs that he wrote as an adult yeah that's like, fair. like that's how they were telling the story it, it didn't really land with me but yeah I've heard that a lot that like the like Rocket Man wasn't as big as um oh my God what was it called Bohemian Rhapsody that's it yeah it like it didn't yeah like, out of the part. two I enjoyed Bohemian Rhapsody oh better. yeah like yeah. and like don't get me wrong both the actors did incredible jobs like portraying like Freddie Mercury and Elton John but like yeah like I agree the soundtrack was like still good but like it didn't make sense yeah. like where they put it so who wants to start with their f- one of their favorites I'll go if you guys are yeah. down for that by all means uh, so yeah my first one is obviously Phil Collins with Tarzan oh yes because right. 
Phil Collins went so hard on that, and I, I just appreciate it so much. Um, one, one of maybe the kind of less appreciated Disney films, but I think everybody agrees that the soundtrack is uh, rocking. Absolutely. I, I totally agree with and that. And it's probably more popular than the movie. The soundtrack? I, I yeah. think so. To some yeah. extent. Yeah. Yeah. No, I would agree. And it's like I found out some interesting facts about the soundtrack. Um, You'll Be In My Heart, which I think everybody knows pretty, like, well. <laughs> that was, like, on the radio. The, like, oh, yeah. Like leading that... up and after the release of Tarzan. Like, I remember that being on the radio a lot. Oh, I was, absolutely. I was going to ask that, like, do Disney songs get a, like, well, obviously some radio play, but yeah, you know, I'm, I, really I know like on. Let It Go was like Let It Go was yeah, super was. hot for a while. Yeah, I forget about that one. Oh man, it was like for a while, like it didn't matter what radio station you were on, it was like it was playing, and it was just kind of like it was a good song, but I don't think it was that good. I don't know. Like, yeah. It just seems weird hearing a Disney song on the radio for I some would, reason. I, if any Disney song made it on the radio that I would love to hear, it would probably be Make a Man Out of You from Mulan, <laughs> just because that's such a lit song. <laughs> Have you ever seen bang. Jackie Chan sing the Chinese version of that? Yeah. Yep. yeah. It's, oh, yeah. Oh, if you haven't seen that, I like there'll be a link in the description just because you need to watch that. It's pretty great. Yeah. Pretty sure that's how Jackie Chan mostly, like, how he learned, <clears throat> pardon me, learned English by just, like, singing along to, not, really? necess- not necessarily yeah, he, Disney Yeah, he songs. was actually, like, a trained yeah. opera thing, like, part of, like, he went to some sort of, like, entertainment school or something when he was a kid, yeah, from what I understand, fun. and I think part of that was, like, singing. J- Jackie Chan can sing opera? Yeah, we just got to hook him up with Anthony Hopkins, and there you go. Yeah. You got yourself a production. Somebody make that happen, please. Like this <laughs> I need to see it. Uh, but anyway, sorry. Uh, yeah, You'll Be In My Heart actually won an Academy Award for the best song, um, while the entire s- soundtrack was actually awarded a Grammy for the best original soundtrack, which I thought was really cool. Yeah. And I was like, I mean, it makes sense, though, because like you listen to the soundtrack from like beginning to end. It's like, it's really good. <laughs> I don't know. Um, another really cool thing I found out was that You'll Be In My Heart, he actually wrote it at a Christmas party. He was just fooling around on the piano. He's like, oh, <laughs> I think I got something. And he didn't have anything to write with. So he grabbed wrapping paper and like wrote down the me- melody and like came up with the lyrics later. But I thought that was hilarious, but he didn't want to forget it. So he's like, somebody yeah. give me something. <laughs> like, I need to put this down. And um, the last fact I found was that the song Trash the Camp, uh, Phil Collins did that all by himself. He didn't have anybody else with him in the studio. And I guess he was just going around hitting random things because he was trying to make sure, like, when it came to, like, the animation that they had a lot of stuff to work from. Apparently, he even ran around, went around, like, and, like, hit his head at, like, different <laughs> parts with the microphone to get different sounds. And they actually used quite a bit of it for, the, like, that scene. <laughs> it's dedicated. Yeah. 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 Phil Collins' head is a percussive instrument. Who knew? Yeah. I mean, I mean he's kind of shaped. Okay, I can see it. I don't know. Picturing but, is the shape of his head. Yeah. yeah. I get it. <laughs> Makes sense to me. But, yeah, like... That's I think it's an underrated Disney film, but like the soundtrack definitely got the love it deserved. So I had to bring that up. Nice, cool, Chris. Show and tell time. Yeah. Again. Yeah, Mr. Physical Media. Yeah, literally. Yeah, spend some money, buy a record. <laughs> uh, this one was actually really hard to find uh, information on, but it's Frank's Wild Ears by Tom Waits. What soundtrack oh. is that? Like, what's it's that actually from? not from a movie, so I might be breaking the rules oh. here. I hope. It's from a stage production. Okay. Oh, wait, Hopefully I, this doesn't mess up the focus. I'm trying to get the shot right. That's okay. I'll put some. Oh, look at that glare. Look at that Ooh. glare. Anyways, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it was a stage play. Um, him with a longtime collaborator, Catherine Brennan. I think they got married. Anyways, we got Tom Waits. If you know him, you either love him or hate him. Yeah, he's definitely one of those artists for sure. Or I guess there, there might be a third. I don't get it. <laughs> camp. <laughs> He's basically, um, if you don't know who Tom Waits is, um, wow, how'd you describe him? Booze-soaked, really close to homeless piano player. Um, yeah, Tom Waits is hard to describe. Oh, uh, Louis Armstrong on heroin. If that <laughs> sounds appealing. Any rate. That is quite the description. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just thought that. I think it's pretty accurate. So, like, what, what, like, sound, like, you said it was for a play. What play was this for? Frank's Wild Years. Is there any information uh, about that? Because I have no idea. I can read you the synopsis. (laughs) Basically, it's just a guy down on his luck and just kind of traveling around America. And and then I think, uh, I might get the the era wrong, but I don't think the maybe 50s. Oh, okay. Early 60s. Hopping on trains, smoking cigarettes, drinking terrible martinis. Nice. Reflecting on life. Reflecting on life. Reflecting <laughs> <laughs> on life. So yeah, if you like Tom Waits, you probably already know this album. 
so yeah, it's uh, that's all I got really. Yeah, no, N- nice pull from a stage play. Like yeah, I didn't even think of yeah, I didn't either doing that. Yeah, but yeah, I was surprised. I, th- I figured there'd be a lot to like uncover via the internet, but even a lot of the <laughs> a lot of the comments I saw about the the soundtrack was yeah, there's nothing on the internet. Yeah, yep. I found a hard time finding <laughs> stuff for soundtracks too. Well, uh, my first pick is the uh, soundtrack for the 1986 Transformers animated movie. Nice. nice. Uh, it's got a few uh, bangers on it. Uh, first off, they were done by uh, Stan Bush. There's a couple of kind of iconic tracks from that. First one is The Touch, which was inspired from a line from Iron Eagle. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't originally written for Transformers. It was written for the Stallone film Cobra. What? But uh, oh, didn't get didn't get used for Cobra, but got used for uh, Transformers. <laughs> well, Cobra, you snooze, you lose. Yep. Uh, apparently, Mark Wahlberg sang the song once in uh, Boogie Nights. Wait, what? Yeah. Really? <laughs> it makes a brief appearance in the uh, Bumblebee, the recent Bumblebee movie. Oh, cool. <laughs> and uh, the second kind of big track was Dare. It's been featured in a couple other kind of uh, '80s era like shows. Uh, okay. Glow on Netflix, as well as the oh, Goldbergs. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah, they use Dare. And uh, there's like a rock version of the Transformers cartoon theme by Lion. Oh, cool. And, of course, the album wraps up with uh, Weird Al's Dare to be Stupid. <laughs> nice. Because they apparently randomly approached Weird Al. It's like, hey, can we use this song for like our soundtrack and Weird Al having no idea it's like yeah sure <laughs> so it's like the very last uh, very last song on the uh, album I have the physical vinyl album of this anyway I, I don't have it with me but it's the only vinyl album I know because I recently got a turntable and that oh, was nice. the first thing I got was the Transformers <laughs> soundtrack that's goals right there yeah alright Rachel oh okay so the next like two soundtracks are by the same composer, and I don't know if it's weird to have a favorite composer, but like no, no it's not, not at all. No, yeah. okay, I, I don't know. I got one. He's definitely my favorite, um, and that would be uh, James Newton Howard. And the first uh, soundtrack I want to talk that I came up with was uh, Peter Jackson. Peter Jackson's King Kong. Yep. And um, I did that because I actually use a lot of like uh, his songs when I'm writing and stuff because I find it super inspirational. He has like such a really good. Um, vibe to him but like something that blew my mind because like the peter jackson king kong if you've seen it it's like a three hour movie right yeah. like it's not yeah. a short movie there's no such thing as a p- short peter jackson movie anymore yeah no not since like the 90s no <laughs> but um he actually came in last minute and he only had five weeks to like compose this entire cool. movie like, yeah i got this yeah he was just like flexing he's like all right i got this and Hold um, my beer. yeah literally and uh he was actually nominated for a golden globe for best original score for this and also nominated for soundtrack of the uh, soundtrack composer of the year and best original soundtrack at the world soundtrack awards oh uh, that's i'm happy that's a thing me too yeah i think well i think like if you put that much work into me like into your work <laughs> i guess yeah, that's the way to put it sense. um it, you should be recognized for that and i think james newton howard like he's m night Shyamalan's like go-to composer he's done every one of his films and it's like he always puts out such good music yeah so like i feel like he definitely needs to get some recognition for that uh, i actually do the same thing too when i'm writing i usually have a soundtrack right? on. um yeah but yeah yeah like it's incredible like every time i hear the music like I don't know what it is about Peter Jackson's King Kong, but I literally, at the end of the movie, cry like a ball every time, and I don't know why. I think it's partially She's not probably lying. because of the music. Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> you just admit it. I'm just confirming. It's emotional, okay? You're confirming your. Uh, Are you kidding me? Like, King Kong like literally dies, and then like you're it's, just it's like not whatever. That sad. I don't know. It's just I don't know. It's an emotional scene for me. I don't, uh, yeah, that, that's allowed. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. But yeah, definitely, uh, definitely a good one. Cool. I guess that's me. Yeah. This one I kind of cheated on again, too. Because the album came out way before the movie. But it's Loretta Lynn's Coal Miner's Daughter. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah. Amazing movie. I probably should Isn't try to Tommy Lee him. Jones in that? Yeah. Uh, Sissy Spacek, Beverly D'Angelo. Oh, sorry. Uh, Sissy Spacek as Loretta, Loretta Lynn. Yeah. Oh, so it's like a kind of like a what? story of her life. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Great movie. Amazing movie. Well, yeah, it'd be kind of awkward if they used a different soundtrack, like, other than yeah. Loretta Lynn. Well, uh, uh, for the movie, they actually didn't. They got... Oh, wait, what? Sissy Spacek and uh, Beverly D'Angelo to sing the actual parts of Loretta Lynn and uh, Patsy Cline. Oh, so they actually... Oh, yeah, they, they stepped wow. up to the mic 
Well done. And uh, crushed it. If you're into some old school country, not oh, that glare. I should have taken the plastic off. Anyhow, <laughs> breaking the fourth wall. Um, yeah, classic country album. Classic movie. That's all I got. One of the one of the greats right here. Yeah, Loretta Lynn. Okay. And a fantastic country artist. Yes, yeah. just in. I'm general. not sure if she's still going right now or not. I know she put out some stuff with Jack Black a little while ago. Like Jack Black, the actor. Oh God, no! Uh, sorry, Jack White. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was like, wait a hmm. minute, what? <laughs> Who has performed with Jack Black? Yeah, not Loretta Lynn yet. That would be that would be an interesting one. I gotta ask though. Make it happen, internet. Um, yeah. What was it? Fist City is probably the one that <laughs> yeah. I know like the most from Loretta yeah. Lynn. Was that in the movie? No, no, oh, that's that not from this, sad. unfortunately. Okay. But if you haven't seen Fist City or heard Fist City, just yeah. hop on YouTube. Listen, gangster rap has nothing <laughs> really on Ooh. Loretta Lynn. She's talking about picking up by like picking this girl up by her hair, and you better close your face if you don't want to eat a meal called Fist. Oh, the lyrics are just savage. It's yeah. amazing. Like, and the crazy thing though is like if you right watch now. the performance, she's sitting there with just a big, at, like big grin on her face, <laughs> yeah, she's just, and it's just, she's just smiling. And it's like, like I remember, like, I'm gonna feed you your heart. One of the yeah. yeah, that's I think that's more intimidating than somebody that looks mad at you. It's like, oh hey, how's it going? Like I'm gonna kill you. You're like, wait, you got a you got a really good grin on your face. Like why are you saying that? Yeah, <laughs> the original Joker. <laughs> <laughs> it's no joke. Yeah. Uh, next up I'm for me, <laughs> um, Top Gun. Nice. Had to go with Top Gun. Of course. That's uh, a classic. Bunch of iconic tracks on there. Danger Zone, of course. Like, as soon as you said that, I almost am, just automatically started fist pumping. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> Leather jacket. For sure. Uh, Goose. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, Danger Zone has got a little bit of popularity because of uh, Archer, because he's constantly, like, quoting, like, <laughs> yeah, Kenny Loggins. I think they had Kenny Loggins on an episode of Archer. I hope That's so. Wicked. Once, Yeah. Uh, you also got uh, Mighty Wings from uh, Cheap Trick. Oh, and if you've nice. ever heard Ken's theme from Street Fighter 2, they're basically the same track. Are they? Yep. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll pull it up for you after. They're, they're the same track. You're, you're about to get your yeah. mind blown. Nice. Yeah. Uh, of course, you also got Take My Breath Away, which is oh, kind of a, I kind of, it's like a wedding one of oh, those yeah. songs that you'd always always hear like at a wedding in the nineties. So, oh, who was that originally by? Because the only one that I heard of was a cover by Jessica Simpson. <sighs> the name escapes uh, me yeah. right now, and oh. it's like it's one of those names that I should know. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. Sorry, I totally just like. <laughs> and just like the score for it, like the Top Gun anthem. Yeah. Like that, those initial shots where like they're out on the carrier and like the the F-14s are like rising up on the hangar and then shooting off of the, the catapult. I yeah. mean, it's it, it's super, super iconic. Also, Berlin? For who? You take my breath away? For who? Berlin? Yeah. Was that who did it? That, that's who oh. did it for the Top Gun Trans track. Okay, cool. Yep. Oh. And shit. also Canadian rock band Loverboy hey. did, did a track <laughs> on there. So oh, cool. I like little that. A little bit, little bit of CanCon there, but uh, yeah. I'm still waiting for Top Gun 2. I'm really disappointed that they didn't call Top Gun 2 Danger Zone. Oh, that oh, that's yeah. a missed opportunity. They just called it Maverick. It's like, why wouldn't you call it Danger Zone? Come yeah. on, man. Well, I, I don't know if this is true or not, but I guess like the whole reason like it's been taking so long is because Tom Cruise is just like, I want this in theaters. This needs to be seen in theaters. He's holding out for as long as he can yeah. because he wants a theater, theatrical release because he thinks it being released at home and stuff is just not going to be... Yeah, I think it's slated for like October or something yeah. now, which is, mm-hmm. I mean, it was supposed to come out last summer, so... Yeah. And but, yeah, last summer was a bit of a write-off. Yeah. And I guess uh, China had some issues with some of the flags on his jacket. And, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, dang. Yeah, yeah, that, that was a bit of controversy there. Yeah, but uh, the Top Gun soundtrack, just one of those soundtracks that I could throw on any time. It'll yeah. just pump you up. Oh, you're automatically motivated. Like, you just, like, you don't even need to listen to, like, a pump-up playlist. You just need to listen to that if you're at the gym. Because then you're just like, oh, yeah, cool. Yeah. We're going. <laughs> listen to that and Rocky at the same time. Oh, my God, You're going to yeah. be super buff at the end of that gym session. <laughs> yeah, with the montage and everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Rachel. Okay, so, yeah, for my last one, again, uh, James Newton Howard. And this one is Lady in the Water. Huh. The M. Night Shyamalan movie that everybody hates, but I like. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't like it. I yeah. hate it. I, I don't know. I'm the kind of person that I'm, like, super stoked with, like, a fantasy kind of, like, in reality kind of thing. So it's, like, I always liked M. Night Shyamalan for that because I felt like his story writing was really well done. And that's actually the whole reason I got into 
TV and film was because of M. Night Shyamalan's writing. But uh, this was Howard's fifth collaboration with uh, Shyamalan. Obviously, he's done every film, like every film (laughs) for him. Um, I didn't really find a lot of stuff on the soundtrack, but I found out some pretty interesting stuff about James Newton Howard. Um, He received eight Oscar nominations for his work. Um, He's worked with Earth, Wind, and Fire, (laughs) Elton John, Cher, Toto, Toto. and uh, Randy Newman. And he scored over 100 films. Wow. Because, yeah, like he actually started when he was really young. When he was four, he was really inspired by his grandma, who was like a professional musician. And he was like, I'm going to do that. And so he actually started working with bands originally. So he like started touring with Elton John before he got into movies. (laughs) And then somebody was like, you want to try a movie? And he was like, sure. Sure. And then like he hasn't looked back since. That must be nice. Right? I haven't scored any movies. What's, what yeah. am I doing with my life? Yeah, like, if anybody wants to like hit Mike or Chris up to score movies, I'll do it. For let's sure. do it. Totally. I'll do it right but, now. Yeah, yeah for, no. for me, no, unless you want like all sea shanties. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's a market. it's yeah. needed. If there's a pirate movie, maybe. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. The next Johnny Depp pirate yeah. movie. Yeah, if that ever happens. But uh, yeah, no. Um, yeah, James Newton Howard. If you haven't listened to any of his stuff, definitely check him out. Cool. Yep. I guess that's me now, huh? Chris. My last one is from my favorite movie of all time. Awesome cover, like, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, of the physical. Absolutely. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Let's get this up here. It is the soundtrack for, or for or from? I don't matter. Either way. Yeah. Amadeus. Classic. I mean, it's just Mozart music. Yep. But it's just a great, great soundtrack. Movie. Amazingly performed. Movie's really good, too. Yeah, one of the, my, my favorite movie. Remember when people used to care about the Oscars? Yes. This is from that era. And since Mike was talking about the cover, I'm just going to brag a little bit. Look at this layout. Look at this. Oh, it, oh, it oh, folds. Look at that gate fold. There are notes. Whoa. There's the story. Of, yeah. This has nothing to do with the actual soundtrack, of course, but I just think it's really cool. It's still nifty, though. Yeah. yeah I'm just, just going to put that there for the rest of the show. There we go. There you go. It's a pretty wicked movie and really awesome yeah. soundtrack. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you're in Mozart. Or like classical that's... like movies, yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. Time, time, time period pieces. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Um, not really much to say about this. Amazing orchestra. Actually, who did this again? The Academy of St. Martin in the Fields. Neville Mariner. Mariner? Neville. You don't really meet a lot of Nevilles nowadays. No. That's too bad. The only Nevilles I know is Neville Longbottom. <laughs> <laughs> never met him. But he's a fictional character. I know. Okay. I was like, <laughs> Well, that's he's good not that real. you never met him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah I just met him. I ran into him at the market the other day. Yeah. Like, are you okay? <laughs> we yeah, need to why? talk. Yeah. Um, Mike, yeah, sorry, oh, I was going to say, I didn't know if you were done, so I was going to ask Mike what his last one was. But No, I was just wrapping her up. Yeah, the Amadeus soundtrack. If you haven't seen that movie, watch it tonight. Yes. Or at least on the weekend. Yeah, Rock Me Amadeus. Rock Me Amadeus. Yeah, a little Falco reference. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my last movie. Uh, it's actually been described as the anime Top Gun. <laughs> I just did Top Gun. I like it. Uh, it's uh, scored by, it's called Macross Plus. Oh, okay, nice. It was oh, scored okay. by Yoko Kano, who also scored uh, Porco Rosso and Cowboy Bebop. Oh, wow, okay. Nice. And uh, the soundtrack, it uh, takes place like me and my future sci fi space battle <laughs> thing. thing. <laughs> it takes place like in a future with like space fighter jets. Nice. And. Uh, you know, the, there's a wide variety of, like, different types of music. You know, there's kind of, like, a classic kind of Western twangy guitar for parts. Uh, there's techno pop, and, uh, you know, there's a, kind of a haunting female uh, vocal called Voices. And uh, I don't have too much about, uh, like, the soundtrack itself, but in the actual movie for the uh, North American dub, uh, Walter White, Brian Cranston, he Whoa. voiced one of the uh, main characters for oh, the that's uh, cool. North American dub. But uh, yes. yeah, if you like Top Gun, if you, you're you in the anime, uh, check out Macross Plus. Uh, like I said, fantastic soundtrack and uh, also, a f- like I said, people describe it as the anime Top Gun. So, so get your leather jacket, yeah. get your fist pumping. The, there are motor- There is a motorcycle scene. So. Nice. Uh, yeah, yeah. Course, I like it. Of course, yeah. I'll have to check that one out. That sounds really good. Yeah. Uh, so I think everybody's done their three yeah. sound- soundtracks right now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm good. All right. So we're going to branch out oh. a little bit. Um, Rachel, you got a couple of uh, deaths, movie deaths. I sure do. Bonus topic. Yeah. Yeah. Bo- bonus. We bonus, bonus round. Yay. Hey, there we go. Uh, yeah. So the first one, I don't know if I'm going to get yelled at for this one. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi's death and A New Hope. 
Oh. Yeah, that I was a think... lame death. He has turned into a pile of towels. Well, like, yeah. the thing is, too, is like, I feel like it could have been way more, like... Impactful? Yeah, mm-hmm. and it just, yeah. it didn't hit. But, like, there's also theories out there that he's not actually dead. Like, the, like if you look into the conspiracy mm. ser- theories of, like, the Star Wars Well, universe, I mean, everybody God. turns into a Force ghost. Yeah, so, yeah, so it's like, Wars. he really isn't dead, but... yeah. Um, yes, yeah, watching a bunch of blankets fall to the floor. Is yeah, really? just like um, I think there was a YouTube channel who actually like redid the fight scene because they oh, were just yeah, like, yeah. yeah, this does not hit as hard as it should. Like we should fix this. And they did. And oh, my God, like <laughs> that was incredible. Like there was a few shots that you could kind of tell it was like a deep fake. But like overall, I was beyond impressed. I was like, holy was crap. Really cool. I'm like, yeah. this is the fight scene that we actually deserve. Because like I feel like Darth Vader would have been like way more pissed <laughs> if he saw Obi-Wan like you. I'm going to get you because you literally cut all my limbs off and left me for dead in a lava. Yeah. Like, river. Um, I didn't find a lot of like anything interesting about this but I did find out that apparently actor Alec Guinness who did play like the older Obi-Wan Kenobi yeah. is the only um, person in the Star Wars series or like ever to be nominated for an Academy Award. Yep. I didn't know that. Sir Alec Guinness. Yeah. 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 Is he a sir? Yeah, he was yeah, sired. Oh, sir. I didn't know that. My bad. Knighted. I feel like all of like the good like really good actors are knighted. <laughs> Just be British to be knighted? Uh probably yeah. At least by the Queen? Um sort of a little off topic. I'm Just not curious. Sure. Thinking out loud. Yeah, because like how cool would it be? Go yeah. around and be like, I'm so Yeah, I think if you have a dual citizenship you actually have to renounce like, because I think there was like a Canadian that was knighted, and he had to renounce his Canadian citizenship. That's rough. Oh, yeah. I could be I wrong know. about that though. Yeah, I don't know if could I could you do like, comment in the comments. Yeah, yeah let somebody us know. let us know. Yeah. <laughs> um, another overrated death. Uh, I talked about this before because I hated the relationship, but uh, Jenny Curran from Forrest Gump. When she died, I felt nothing. Yeah, I think we already know my feelings on her. Yeah, we we yeah. we talked about Jenny in the past. Right. And yeah. I, and like our, every list I looked at was like it was such an emotional death and I was like really yeah, was know, it wasn't really it? like she I don't know I guess the book is much different like apparently Jenny's not oh, yeah, I forget that this like yeah do you, do you have a uh, favorite emotional death oh god put you on the spot it's kind of an oxymoron isn't it you have a favorite emotional death well it's like a death that impacts well, impacts you, you the bit. most yeah I already know mine. Well, who do you have? Then? Yeah, you go first. I gotta think about that. The first twenty minutes of Up. Oh God. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Which we keep bringing. Yeah, up. Like, I, I, it's I, just I, the most <laughs> just brutal. But it like it hits all the points though because it's like it's like you it, it, within that fifteen minutes you lived their life together and it was like, oh my God. And like, it's like all the hardships they go through and just they can't catch a break. Like you emotionally oh. connected with her, and yeah. then it was like, oh by the way, she's dead now, and you're like, what? You were just thinking about it. This, now, is, this is 15 minutes I in. was like eight when it came out, so it might hit different for me now, but <laughs> uh, Macaulay Culkin's death in um, My, My Girl. Girl. Oh, God. That, yeah, that, that was bad. I remember that hitting me hard. I haven't seen it since like, like I was eight, yeah. but like I remember like... Not the bees. Yeah. He the needs bees. his glasses. He, yeah, he can't the, see without his glasses. glasses. Yeah, like, yeah oh, wow. I, I forgot about that. Yeah, that, that was pretty rough. That was a... Yeah. F- like it's supposed to be like a coming of age story and then it's like they were just Which like it yeah it totally is but at the same time it's like okay let's throw a little death in there and like kind of be like surprised but like a lot of people were apparently like emotionally like not prepared because they were like going in they're like oh it's gonna be a cute movie and then it yeah. happened yeah it was a bit of a curveball and then it was like everybody sitting there like what's going <laughs> on um crap I gotta think of a good I got another bad death. I can't think okay. of... I have too many good deaths in my head. I, that's actually could, messed up. Yeah, that is morbid. <laughs> no, sorry. I have emotionally impactful deaths that I know. But, like, the one... Like, uh, Harry Potter's always been, like, a soft spot for me. Yeah. But the one death that never really got me was Cedric Diggory. <laughs> I think it was because it was Robert Pattinson. And, like, I didn't really like him at the time. Yeah. So I was like, whatever. <laughs> like, watched a few movies with him now, and I realized how good of an actor he was. But at the time, I was like, eh. <laughs> and now he's Batman. Yeah, he's Batman. Yep. It's funny because he jokes because people are like, you know you can ruin him if you do this wrong. And he's like, I know. He's like, don't test me because yeah. I will. But I'm like, yeah, I, I've seen some <laughs> in interviews with him where he's like very trolly about yeah. like uh, when he appeared in Twilight and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. But uh, yeah, it'll be yeah. interesting to see what he does for Batman, actually. Yeah. Like with Dobby. Yeah. Oh, Dobby? You didn't care about Dobby's death? Nah, not even. You're really. joking. Nope. Really? 100%. Why? What did Dobby ever do to you? <laughs> he was such a sweet little house elf. He doesn't have to be. He doesn't have to slight me. No, but like for wh- me not to about 
in okay, like Harry like, and Hermione. Okay, like I know, like <laughs> for the Harry Potter fandom, that was a huge one. I know you're not really. A- I, I've only seen like the first. Th- like two or three films. Oh, fair like, enough. Yeah, I was never really into it. So fair enough. The CG just kind of took me out of it. Oh, um, that's fair. Uh, yeah, I know. But Dobby was such a sweet guy. I felt so bad. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, yeah. but yeah, like I guess like an emotionally impactful death for me. My God, this is harder than I thought it would be. I totally <laughs> was not prepared for this. Do yeah, that. Do you want to circle back? <sighs> come back to you. Oh, well, like I guess back. King Kong, like in yeah, the Peter well, yeah, Jackson yeah, one, yeah, because it's that. like I. I don't know what it is. I connect with him. I don't know if that's weird or not. Probably, but I don't know. It's just like that one scene where they're sitting on like the, the Empire State Building, and then he does like the little, and she's like, "Oh my God!" Like you know what I'm saying? And they kind of have a moment. And it's just like, yeah. I feel bad for him. He's all by himself. He has nobody. And then they like just take advantage of him and try and sell him off as a sideshow, and it just it breaks my heart every time. I don't know. Well, now he's gonna get, have fisticuffs with Godzilla. So. Yeah. Apparently, yeah, they, they, if, have you heard of why like they, the height change? Of, he, like, he grew up, apparently. Yeah, like apparently he hit yeah. puberty. <laughs> that's how they wrote that, That's literally how they, because like, people were like, well, he wasn't that big in like Skull Island. <laughs> and, like They were just like, he hit puberty. That's it. Like no other explanation. He just Good got save. Stuff. I, 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 I kind of yeah. wish I turned into a giant monkey when I hit puberty. Yeah, right? I did. Yeah. <laughs> Enough said. Yeah. That's yeah, awkward. I climbed up the Empire State How Building. How did that happen? Yeah, it yeah. was wildly painful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Who's next? Yeah, did we have any we other have in- impactful deaths? Um, this is hard. Because yeah. I have an overrated death. Okay. Oh, what is Go it? Go for it. Bambi's mom. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because I, I heard about it. It had such a reputation. Like, oh, it, it just, like, it crushes you, especially if you watch it as a kid. But this is it's just, like, a, a red flash off screen. I was, like, waiting for more. I was, like, this is what everyone's, like, just so Maybe because it was, like, the there. first death of that type. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah like, because yeah. in Disney, like, cause Bambi came out pretty early in Disney's career. Yeah, did that it was, not? like, one yeah, of their first. Sure. So, like, maybe it was the fact that, like, they actually decided to sh- show the death. Yeah. Maybe that's why it was more impactful. I mean, so many Disney parents have been killed off at this point. (laughs) Well, I don't know if there's any Disney film, I'm sure somebody will correct me, where, like, the parents are actually either together or one's, or they're both alive. Actually, no, Mulan. That's the only one I can think of. But, Hmm. like, for the most part, it's like the parents are dead, there's, like, an evil step parent of some sort or they're orphans or yeah the the only one that i can think of with like a couple is 101 dalmatians yeah that's true that Mm -hmm. is true yeah Yeah. bambi's mom dying the hype just i expected a lot more no that's fair that makes sense yeah Yeah. like everybody's just like yo this is the worst death ever and then it happens it just kind of built up it just kind of happens there's a bit of a chase oh i thought of another one oh you got one not like a not like not like an overrated death, but like a really impactful one. Guardians of the Galaxy two. Oh um, yeah. Oh, what's his name? Blue guy. Uh, oh. Uh, you know who I'm talking about, right? I do know. He's got the mohawk. Oh, I'm. Yeah. He, he was in Mallrats. Yep. And Henry. And Walking Dead. Yeah. Yep. He was. Um. But uh, yeah, the end scene where they're playing uh, father and son by yeah. Cat Stevens and oh. like the, uh, fireworks are going off. Yeah, I yeah. remember uh, my sister and I. We went and saw it. Um, the first opening night like we bought tickets we were super stoked and i don't think i've seen so many people in the theater cry before yeah, like really. I, we looked over and there was people with like tissues passing them down the row like people were prepared for it but Tremendo they were just tissues. like no seriously nice. like people were like actually passing around tissue boxes well but, speaking of soundtracks i mean guardians of the galaxy movies yes yep uh, that's another they good have, one they have like a lot of classic like 80s yeah I kind of love the fact that they didn't like actually make any new songs. They kind of went through and they're like, what would be really good? Together? Yeah, well, it, it ties into the plot. Like, yeah. His mother made him these mixtapes. Yeah. So. Yeah. And that kind of answers your question about soundtracks being popular. Yeah. Yeah. That That's the only one I can say. Yeah, that, oh, yeah. this one that I, yeah. That's true, actually. Because, like, wasn't like the spike in like people listening to those songs and those bands, like, it was just incredible yeah, after the movie came out? Oh, oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Um, Shifting the topic to books. Yep. Uh, Rachel, I know that you recently finished a book. Yeah, I did. Uh, it was called uh, The Mind of the Mass Killer. and uh, Very light reading. Oh, yeah, you know, just of a toilet typical. Book. Yeah. yeah, you know, just hanging out. Uh, but no, if you're really into, like, psychology things and, like, trying to figure stuff out and, like, why people do the things they do, this is a really good book for you. Like, I found it was really interesting. There was a lot of things I learned before. 
And I won't lie, I was the kind of person that was like, oh, like mass shootings only happen in the States. That's a lie. Yeah. Um, like there was a lot of stuff Wait. like... Mass sorry? shootings or school shootings? Mass shootings. Oh, yeah, they have no... Okay. Yeah, but it's like I never realized that was a thing. But like the crazy thing is like some of these guys, like their mind and their psyche, whoo, yeah. they were like they showed some of the manifesto in the book and uh i need a manifesto oh <laughs> what what <laughs> that yeah. you can't <laughs> you can't, you, just what, drop you, that. You can't should we be concerned no okay all right uh i'm a little scared now yep yeah um but you can have a manifesto without being a lunatic can you though <laughs> <laughs> like is that a thing because every time I hear like manifesto, it's like yeah. the Unabomber's manifesto, or you know, like it's an Elliot over, Rogers. It's a, it's a glorified di- di- uh, glorified diary. Yeah, that's all. To do list. Yeah. <laughs> okay. oh, that's... Bucket list. I'm, I'm concerned. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I don't know. Yeah. But uh, no. So you should see the amount of Nerf guns we have in the office. Okay, but they're Nerf guns. That's yeah. okay. Nerf yeah. guns are okay. And water guns. And water guns. Yeah. 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 But um, yeah, yeah, no. If you're if you're into learning about messed up psychology and all that kind of stuff it's definitely the book for you yeah they covered a lot of mass shooters like the columbine uh they talked about i can't remember the guy in sweden but there was a guy in sweden oh Bre- Bre- i think is yeah. that the guy who shot up that island yeah yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. him he like shot 69 people and like the whole reason he did it was because he believed that the muslim invasion was happening and that apparently women needed to be more selective with their breeding partners yeah, and like I, stuff I, like that. I saw like a couple of interviews with him and yeah, yeah he was a, he was disturbing a crazy to watch. Dude. But yeah. like the, the crazy, and they got him alive too. They which did is rare. Yeah. Uh, the crazy thing though um, was that like most of like the similarities between them all, they none of them pled, pled insanity when it came to their trial. Like they're all like, I'm not crazy. This is just my beliefs. And people were like, yeah. Okay, yeah, but you're probably crazy. Yeah. Well, it's like uh, the Toronto thing, the Toronto trial that's happening right now with the guy that went and drove yeah. over all of the people. Oh, yeah, 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 on I, the Young Street there. Yeah. yeah. I guess what's happening right now, um, Ray, like one of our co-workers, he was saying how uh, the the justice system apparently has a YouTube, which I thought was mm. interesting. Um, they released the interview tape of him with one of the seasoned detectives. Yeah. And uh, he can, like, you can see he's relaxed, he's totally fine, and he's like, I don't regret a single thing, but now his defense lawyer is trying to use the autism yeah. defense and saying that, like, oh, yeah, that's why he did it, is because he's autistic. Uh, apparently, like, like, he's what? talking about, like, a lot of internet stuff, like incels and yeah. 4chan yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, and well, I guess it's, like, the people he interacted with, like, Elliot Rogers, one of the shooters in California, and, like, yeah. these people, and it's like, whoa, it's crazy. It's just, it's really, it's an interesting read, but definitely not for people who are a little bit more emotional, because yeah, it's like there was some stuff that was said that was, like, a little, like, ooh. Yeah, not for the squeamish? No, yeah. not at all. But, cool. yeah. 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 I, I know we didn't ask you anything. Have you read anything lately <laughs> you want to bring up? That I can? Yeah. Um. Actually, I got like five or six books on the go right <laughs> yeah. now. Uh, Forsaken. I don't remember the author. I just got it. But uh, it's about um, the Great Depression. And a bunch of Americans go to Russia looking for a better life. Because it's the Great Depression in the States. Yep. And uh, they get there and uh, things don't go well for the American, uh, I guess they'd be immigrants. Yeah. In Stalinist Russia. And yeah, n- 1930s Russia. Yeah, it's yeah. So, uh, yeah, The Forsaken, so far, it's really good. If you're into a kind of forgotten history kind of stuff, yeah. so far, super interesting. And the, the, the amount of research the author did is that, insane. That's always, like, really well appreciated, though. But, like, weren't they a baseball team or something? Yeah, yeah that's how the, the book kind of starts off with that. Like, There's a, there's a baseball team who was like, yeah. yo, let's go. Like, this looks like a normal photo. And, you know, they got some Russian uh, characters on their uh, uniforms and looks just like a normal baseball team and it's like yeah within like the next week all these guys except with the exception of maybe two or three will either be in a gulag or dead or yeah the power of propaganda man yeah Yeah, that's crazy but uh yeah like i said i'm just starting it but a chapter a few chapters in but i'm i'm digging it that's good so yeah um forgotten history forsaken yeah interesting check it out what about you, Mike? You got anything? Yeah, I just uh, finished up a Terry Pratchett book. Nice. Um, Terry Pratchett is like the Douglas Adams of British fantasy. Hmm. Uh, it's very like the way he writes uses like a lot of puns and stuff like that. It's, it's, it's very it. much, yeah, very, very like much my, my speed. <laughs> uh, it's called uh, Small Gods. 
and uh, what it is like in this. Uh, Terry Pratchett has this universe called the Disc World, where the world is it's a flat disc on the back of four elephants on the back of a, a tortoise flying through space. Makes sense. So uh, in this world, like anything that people believe in, like becomes real. Like so people believe in death. So death is like a guy walking around with Christopher Lee's voice. Nice. (laughs) And uh, so anyway, there was a story about like this God who like tried to manifest himself into the world. But he ends up as like a tortoise. And he's just going around with his one believer. <laughs> like, he's the, his one believer is, like, the only guy that can hear his voice. So he, this, tor- this tortoise is, like, cursing people out and trying to call, like, hellfire down on people for not listening to him and stuff. And so then going, like, thou shalt giveth lettuce and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, it's very much like a lighthearted thing. But it's nice. also kind of a, a, a look at religion in general. Because, oh, no. like, okay. the, uh, the, the people who believe, like... Uh, you, the world is actually a flat, a flat world in this. <laughs> so the kooks believe that the world is round <laughs> in, in this world. I like it. So uh, it's it's a fun story. Um, Earth's not flat. Oh. No, but, um, but how come the plane? Yeah. When you're flying one Might way. Might just keep going. We'll <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> apparently uh, Terry Pratchett. Uh, it's a good starting point for any of his Discworld novels. So I definitely recommend checking it. I didn't actually, I didn't actually read it. I listened to the audiobook version of uh, it. It still counts. But yeah, no, that was a that was a fun time. Nice. Yep. And uh, that pretty much brings us to the end of this edition of uh, Media Minute. Yeah. Um, I'm Michael Forward. I'm Chris Reskowski. And I'm Rachel Edge. Make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell. We'll see you next time.